Two days after election night 2022, Democrats and Republicans closely watching key races that will determine who controls Congress. Control of the U.S. Senate comes down to just three states. Here in Southern California, new vote totals in for the race for L.A. Mayor show Karen Bass and Rick Caruso neck in neck. Let's get right to KTLA's John Finolio with the numbers. John? Chair Mike, the race for L.A. Mayor continues to be a nail biter. The L.A. County Registrar of Voters releasing a new batch of ballot totals today showing Congresswoman Karen Bass trailing Rick Caruso by less than a point. Take a look. Just yesterday, more than 12,000 votes separated Bass and Caruso. Today, that had been whittled down to just 2,695 votes with 59% of the ballots counted. Now, in the race for L.A. County Sheriff, Robert Luna leads by more than 206,000 votes over incumbent Alex Villanueva. Luna has 58% of the vote to Villanueva's 42%. And let's take a look at the national picture. The Senate split 50-50 going into Election Day. Now both parties need to win two of three remaining states to clinch the majority. One of them is Arizona. Democratic incumbent and former astronaut Mark Kelly leads by more than 100 and 15,000 votes over Republican and political newcomer Blake Masters. And in Nevada, it is a tight race, with Republican Adam Laxalt leading Democratic incumbent Catherine Cortez Mastro by about 9,000 votes. 48 hours after the polls closed, the balance of power is too close to call. Ballots are still being counted in Battleground, Arizona one of three states that will determine which party controls the Senate. Incumbent Democratic Senator Mark Kelly widening his lead over Republican Blake Masters in the Grand Canyon state. In Nevada, a nail-biting race between Republican Adam Laxalt and current Democratic Senator Catherine Cortez Mastro. And in Georgia... That means we got a runoff. Hey, I was built for this. The runoff election between Republican Herschel Walker and Democratic incumbent Senator Raphael Warnock is set for December 6th, after neither candidate received 50% of the vote. Let's win this thing one more time. But the nation still faces the likelihood of a divided government. Republicans appear on track to take back the House after winning key congressional races in districts that have leaned Democratic. We are going to take the House back. House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy of Bakersfield Wednesday announced his bid to become House Speaker should Republicans win control. <laughs> President Biden in D.C. Thursday touting a strong turnout for Democrats while signaling the GOP's takeover of the lower chamber. Regardless of what the final tally showed, I'm prepared to work with Republicans. But the American people have made it clear they expect Republicans to work with me as well. The red wave that many had expected this election didn't materialize, leaving some Republicans wondering if their party's standard bearer is a poor choice ahead of the next election. Many of Donald Trump's candidates lost, and a lot of people in the Republican Party are probably going to say, maybe he shouldn't be the head of our party if he's choosing candidates like this. There's this, I don't know what's the right term for it, maybe a Trump drag factor. Right. right. Everybody who's who's tightly associated with Donald Trump, and we watched it play out all over the country in these races. Certainly watched it play out in Georgia. I mean, the drag factor is tangible. It was, uh, you know, what eight eight or nine points between Brian Kemp and and Herschel Walker, and we've seen it play out all over the country. The Trump drag factor is real, and it's only getting worse. All right. Here's a quick look at the House. A total of 435 seats. A party needs 218 to clinch the majority. That means Republicans need just nine more seats with about 35 races still undecided. The L.A. County Registrar plans to release updated results again tomorrow, so stay tuned. Sharon Micah, sending it back to you.